Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all new 2021 Dell XPS 13. Now, recently on my channel, I've been taking a look at a lot of the 11th gen mobile Intel CPUs with the built in XE graphics. So far, I've tested the 1135G7, the 1165G7, and now with this new XPS, I'm finally able to test the 1185G7. Now, I got to say, this thing is absolutely beautiful. We have a CNC machine shell here. Bottom is aluminum, the top is aluminum, and we have a 13.4 inch IPS Infinity Edge display. Along with the laptop, they also include a 45 watt USB type C charger, and I actually thought that they would include at least a 65 watt given that we have that 1185G7, but this should be sufficient. And underneath our user manual, we also get a USB type C to USB 3 adapter because the XPS we have here only utilizes Thunderbolt 4 ports. And speaking of that, over here on this side, we have our Thunderbolt 4 for charging, display out, and Thunderbolt accessories like eGPUs. On this side, they've also included a micro SD card reader. And if we move over to the other side, we have another Thunderbolt 4 port and the 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now with this XPS line, they do offer a few different display variants. The one I have here is the 13.4 inch IPS Infinity Edge touch display at 1920 by 1200, but they also offer a non-touch display, which is basically the same here, and a 4K option. So before we dive into the specs and start testing this unit out, I did want to mention that this was sent over by Micro Center for review. So this video is sponsored by Micro Center. So yeah, if you're not familiar with Micro Center, then you really should be if you're a tech enthusiast. They have real brick and mortar stores that you can walk in. You can test out the panels if you need to buy an LCD. You can see the cases. You can put your hands on the product before you purchase it. They have stores in California, Colorado, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Virginia. I'm going to leave links to Micro Center's website so you can find the closest store, and you definitely need to get in there, especially if you're into tech. And by the way, Micro Center is running a promotion right now where you can get a free 32 gigabyte flash drive and a free 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Definitely check out the links in the description for that. Overall, I'm loving the design of this XPS. We got this huge trackpad here, edge to edge backlit keyboard, a 13.4 inch infinity edge display. This is the touch model with an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 and a resolution of 1920 by 1200. Even though we're working with a small footprint here, this thing actually packs quite a punch. For the CPU, we have that Intel Evo i7 1185G7, formerly known as Tiger Lake, four cores, eight threads, base clock of three gigahertz with a boost up to 4.8. Built-in Iris XE graphics, this is the 96 execution units version, up to 1.35 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X running at 4,267 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, a 52 watt hour battery, and Dell claims up to 14 hours and 11 minutes of video streaming on this device. The screen is 100% sRGB and 90% DCI-P3, we have a fingerprint reader built into the power button, and this is running Windows 10 Pro. As for usability, I've been having a really good time with this little laptop here. I mean, it's super quick, especially with that Wi-Fi 6 built in. Web browsing isn't going to be an issue whatsoever. We'll head over to Micro Center's website. Everything loads right up. And when it comes to the size of this trackpad versus the size of the laptop, I think they nailed it here. And this edge-to-edge -edge keyboard does have full-size keys on it. Next thing I wanted to test was a little bit of 4K video playback. I know we're working with a 1920 by 1200 display, but we can still set this to 4K. And up in the top left hand corner, I do have stats for nerds on. I'm going to move in a bit closer so we can see if this is dropping any frames. If we take a look up here, you can see that we're at zero drop frames. This thing is trucking right along. And as sound goes, it's a lot louder than I thought it would be, given such a small form factor laptop here. It's got really good sound built in. So if you did want to connect this to an external 4K monitor or TV to stream your favorite 4K videos, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. The next thing I wanted to do was run a few benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 with a single core score of 1404, multi 4799. Was hoping for a little better out of that multi, but we only have four cores and eight threads here. Next on the list, PC Mark 10 with a 4942. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid at 18,099, Firestrike came in at 5,214, and finally Time Spy at 1,811. 
these are actually really impressive for integrated graphics. On my channel, I do a lot of testing with different APUs, basically CPUs with built-in graphics, and these are definitely some of the best scores that I've seen. So with scores like this, I definitely have to test out a little bit of PC gaming. Now, I do want to mention that this is not marketed as a gaming PC whatsoever, but I'm a big fan of these integrated graphics, so let's go ahead and test some stuff out. So first up, we have Overwatch, and we're getting phenomenal performance out of this. 1080p, medium settings, this is fully playable. By the end of my run here, I got an average of 76 FPS. We're not going to be able to take this up to Ultra, but we are at 1080p medium, and it still looks great, and it's very playable on this machine. Next on the list, we have Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, and unfortunately I did have to take this down below settings. I mean, it still looks pretty decent, and it's very playable here. I got an average of 63 FPS out of this one. I mean, this is definitely not bad performance, and even though we're at low, keep in mind these are integrated Intel graphics. And finally on the list, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and this actually worked out a lot better than I thought it would. I'm at 720p, 70% resolution scale, and low settings, but I did get over 30 FPS. It actually averaged out at 34 FPS, and yeah, I mean, this is just a really hard game to run, and seeing it on integrated graphics like this is pretty awesome. As for battery life on the XPS 13, I was really impressed and Dell was really close and I'm sure their testing procedures are a bit different from mine. But what I do is run a video rundown test. Screen at 50% brightness, this is a 1080p MP4 video that just plays on a loop. I got 13 hours and 38 minutes out of this and from the Dell management software I was set to balanced performance. So yeah, overall, really impressed by this little laptop. I love the build quality. There's definitely a few things I would have loved to see changed, like at least one full-size USB port. Everybody's swapping over to this USB Type-C, and I really hate using dongles for everything. But remember, both of these ports on this unit are Thunderbolt 4, and they do support video out. We got this fingerprint reader over here. That edge-to-edge -edge keyboard is really nice, and it's got a huge trackpad given the form factor of this laptop. But I gotta say, one of my favorite things about this whole setup is the screen itself. Now it's not a 4K display on this, you can opt for the 4K if you want to, but this one here has that touch screen built in and it is crystal clear and you might notice there's hardly any bezels on this unit at all. So if you're looking for a high quality ultra portable PC and it's not a gaming laptop, I could definitely recommend something like the XPS 13. This is a great little unit here for home use and office use. Amazing build quality, great battery life, and an awesome screen. Now before I wrap this video up, I did want to mention the power settings on this laptop itself. Now right out of the box, it's going to be set to balanced, and if you go to run a benchmark or play a game, it's basically going to be working at half performance. What you really need to do is either go into the BIOS, or open up the built-in Dell software, select power management, find the thermal performance setting, and set this to ultra performance. And what this is going to do is up the TDP on that CPU to allow it to work at its maximum frequency for much longer. It's also going to kick that fan up a little more, but it's really not that loud. But without this setting enabled, you're basically going to be running this laptop at half speed. And for everyday use, that's totally fine. You want to do web browsing, even video playback. Set to balanced is fine. But if you want to get the max performance out of this laptop, definitely set it to ultra performance. So like I mentioned, if you're looking for an ultra portable premium laptop, this is something that I can definitely recommend. Now if you want to get into gaming, go with a gaming laptop. But if you know your use case scenario for a laptop like this, this is a really great choice. I'm a big fan of this Intel 1185G7. We're getting some really good performance out of this thing and amazing battery life for what we have here. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this laptop, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this laptop, just let me know in the comments below. Even when it comes to an eGPU, I can do a dedicated video over Thunderbolt 4. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.